My name is Alex William Smith by birth. These days I'm better known as Jonathan Ryle Hypnotist. I was formerly known as magician Alex Leroy. In 1998 I set out to expose the dishonest uh, activities of Baza Mahmood. Unfortunately this backfired landing me in prison as explained at circusofthemind.net. I became very much a victim of Maza Mahmood the fake sheikh and in the past couple of years um, it's come to light the proof and evidence that he hacked my phone, used unlawful information gathering and that he drugged my drinks as well as what I already knew that he manipulated and intimidated behind the scenes through his associates and basically outright lied. What follows, there are some clips from either episode one or episode two or episode three of Amazon Prime's uh, documentary which released on the 26th of September 2023 called The Fake Shake. These clips are used under fair usage, copyright exemption and the fact that I'm giving a critical review of the content. So finally, episode three of The Fake Shake, Amazon Prime's documentary on Maza Mahmood starts yet again with that disclaimer. Um, and therefore, we can probably play Spot Jonathan Royal outside the Old Bailey. So this starts with phone hacking. ...pressure and public anger over the phone hacking scandal. The News of the World, the country's biggest selling newspaper, has announced that this Sunday's edition will be its last. Police investigating the allegations of phone hacking said they were working through a list of 4,000 potential victims. I feel... They've always tried to paint it that Maza Mahmood did not use such techniques as phone hacking or unlawful information gathering. But if that's the case, why have so many people in September 2022, former fake shape victims such as myself, Emma Morgan, Talisa Contostavlos, various other people filed claims in the High Court against newsgroup newspapers, including for the illegal and unlawful activities carried out against them by... Maza Mahmood. Morally bankrupt. Totally, and you are morally bankrupt. The, the, the whole Carl said, of press freedom yeah, is a I... smokescreen for selling newspapers with tittle tattle. And you hide behind this whenever it comes up. It's absolute BS. Words of truth there from Steve Coogan when he was younger. And here he is with yours truly, Alex Smith, magician, a.k.a. Jonathan Royal, hypnotist, formerly known as Alex Leroy, hypnotist. And in Steve's hand, you can see a £20 note. That's because I've just repaid him the £20 that he kindly lent me in uh, early 1993 when he saw me supporting comedian Lee Evans at Manchester's Buzz Club. And then we went out um, on the town and I needed some money to get a taxi home. I managed to pay him back in 2022 when we met up at a hacked off um, campaign at uh, the Houses of Parliament in London. Time to play Spot Jonathan Royal, hypnotist aka Alex William Smith by birth, formerly known as Alex Leroy, magician, stood outside the Old Bailey in London. You can see me on the opening credits of every episode of The Fake Shake on Amazon Prime. Azum Amut, the journalist known as The Fake Shake, has opened at the Old Bailey. It was so unbelievable, it was believable. You know, this can't be fake. Get ready. Not on there for long, and it's a side view, but you can see me. For 30 years, he has reveled in hiding his identity. If you look carefully, you can see the side of my face now in the distance, but... The key to his entire The self-styled king of the sting. Yes, there I am. Caught every day beneath the balaclava. Brilliant, this comment. And there was less tolerance for shenanigans. And journalists had to be more careful. Um, only I don't think Mazamud got that memo. <laughs> Hilarious. This is talking about when the sun on Sunday started, trying to distance itself from the activities of murdering, uh, not murdering, rather hacking the voicemail of a murder schoolgirl named Millie Dowler, which caused the news of the world, amongst other things, that caused the news of the world to close down. But Mahmood went on to be doing the same at the Sun on Sunday. Not surprisingly, we are may already making mention of Talisa Tron Tostavlos, pop star. was a pop star. She was a TV personality. 
and whose drug trial collapsed in 2014. This obviously is going to be the major part of this episode, so there won't be that many clips because we know that the case collapsed and then after a protracted period of time, Mahmood was charged and finally but on trial, found guilty unanimously by the jury and sentenced um, to prison for conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. Speaking about the Talisa Sting, a uh, former News of the World journalist, Elia Fox, said... It was incredibly convincing. He got her tipsy. He offered her the world and the foot... He got a tipsy. Well, Talisa and her friends all assert that their drinks were spiked and that's why people ended up throwing up uh, in... Uh, Mahmood's hotel suite, something that numerous other people have asserted as well over the years, including me. Talisa rightfully upset. I just want my life back. Of course you do. <laughs> they ruined me. This would never have happened unless they created the situation. They made it happen. That's this the key. Would never have happened unless they they made it happen, they did, and that happened throughout the years. And has come to light in the past couple of years because of documents disclosed during the High Court Mitville, the so-called unlawful information gathering phone hacking cases, as it were. There are documents that exist that were disclosed by news group newspapers, documents where the Crown Prosecution Service and the police were communicating with each other in 1994. Yes, 1994, that's 20 years before the Talisa trial occurred in 2014, where they categorically state to each other they could no longer and should no longer consider Mahmood a witness of truth. But why did they carry on doing so then? And then we consider Rodri Giggs' case in 1999, where the case collapsed because the prosecution said they could no longer rely on the recordings from Maza Mahmood. Why or why did these things continue? Talisa's lawyer made a short statement. This is 2013 when she pleaded for the first time in court. Short statement on behalf of Talisa. Talisa's been charged with a serious criminal offence. Should never have gone to court. She's today pleaded not guilty. Quite rightly. As has been widely reported, this entire case has been manufactured by Maza Mahmood. Too bloody right. It's a fake shake. He lied routinely. Steve Grayson, who um, came out on Panorama's uh, Fake Shake Exposed 2014 documentary and fully exposed how they were all uh, elements of the supply chain regarding the drugs and the Emma Morgan uh, case has just been on. And now Emma points out how basically the Talisa case and numerous other cases were identical, albeit different people, sometimes different storylines, but listen to this. Is that although his victims can be very, very different, he still used the same blueprint. He still sold them the dream. He gave them what they wanted. He dangled the biggest carrot ever, knowing they were going to reach for that carrot. And that's how he brought them down. Which is not legal. Or at least it's arguably not legal because this is non-state entrapment we're talking about. If that was a police officer, it would not be considered legal and it would never get to court. But of course, he always argued that it was in the public interest. So because if it was in the public interest, that would allow him to do secret covert filming and it would allow him to do things that would normally be considered illegal, unethical and immoral because it was in the public interest. But here's the problem. Upon investigation, the vast majority, I would probably argue over 90% of his stories over the decades, were not really in the public interest because they were fabricated, manufactured, engineered, and consisted of lies, disinformation, things out of context, uh, and just outright fabrications in many cases. And there were fishing expeditions where he caused crimes that would never to have occur normally occur to occur 
which would never have happened if he hadn't provided the money up front, if they weren't all elements of the supply chain and if they weren't using unlawful information gathering to be able to socially engineer things on a massive level because they were always five steps ahead of people. This man is Jeremy Dean, formerly QC, now KC, who represented Talisa in her 2014 drug trial, which collapsed, and, well, we know where that went. Trapment is not a defence to a criminal charge, but a judge is entitled to stop the proceedings if he or she feels this was crime manufactured by motherhood, and obviously you'll be drawing from it. Well, all of them were, well, large amounts of his cases in terms of dangling a carrot, when Mahmood played Perry Khan, saying that his boss was a rich oil shake, and he did his 1998 sting on me, where he was always five steps ahead of the game, I thought I was trying to expose his dishonesty, as explained, explained at circusofthemind.net in full, but they already knew. He knew I knew who he was. But anyway, aside from that and the fact that they drugged me, used unlawful information gathering and all those things, he still used the same modest operandi, the same blueprint, so to speak, and he off offered me lucrative television presenting work in Dubai uh, that would make me famous, apparently. Now, as it happened, he needn't have done that stuff because I was playing along in order to get recordings of him so I could expose his dishonesty and all the stuff explained at circusofthemind.net. But it shows that he used the same format with the vast majority of people. Jeremy Dean speaks researched or dying. the old cases before, in the Talisi case, and the view I formed is that, that this was a journalist whose working practices could not be trusted. The defendants were being lured in by inducement, and Mahmoud and his cohort, they were actually creating and, 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 and generating the crime that they would later be heard to say was in the public interest Mahmoud and his team generated the crimes. So it was in many cases, including mine. He provided the money, gave it to me up front, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to go and buy the alleged counterfeit coins. One of his associates behind the scenes told me where to obtain such coins from, because otherwise I wouldn't have known. And all the other things that I played along with as part of my role because I was attempting to expose his dishonesty, as fully explained at circusofthemind.net, um, I was never charged for because I never did. I didn't know where to get drugs from or oozy submachine guns, but according to Mahmood, apparently I did. Nonsense. Jeremy Dean will talk about um, so-called journalistic license. We wanted to see the information and or be told who it was who provided that information. And we got nothing. They got nothing. The problem, you see, journalists didn't have to disclose their sources. If you knew the source, then you could show, more often than not, certainly in my case, there's one of my former publicist who was involved in helping stitch me up behind the scenes and helping my mood it turned out to be five steps ahead of the game as well as using unlawful information gathering phone hacking but also there was manipulation uh, and social engineering going on through my former publicist this happened with many other people as well but he didn't have to mention their names in court he didn't have to reveal it if he didn't want if you could have got that stuff out then it would have been easier for people in the past to show that there was no public interest and uh, Actually, there was never going to be a crime until Mahmoud and his team engineered it to occur. It's not something that had ever happened before or ever would have happened without their nefarious interventions. We hear from Geordie Kidd in this episode as well. Just another person that's, that's, that's a victim of this man. <laughs> I well remember after my a show I did at the Lone Star restaurant near the beach in Barbados where one of the audience members was Jodie Kidd's um, 
stepsister Debbie Paris. There we are at a nightclub afterwards uh, discussing my fake shake experiences with uh, Debbie and talking about Geordie being a victim as well. The moment it fell apart for Mahmood. I'd asked Mahmood the same thing at the legal arguments hearing and Mahmood had said no. The judge instantaneously intervened and effectively said to Mahmood, you lied to me on the legal arguments hearing. You told me that you hadn't spoken to him. Now you're saying you might have done. Tell the truth. And as we know, ultimately the case collapsed. Talisa and her colleague walked free, as you should do, because it would never have happened if it hadn't have all been engineered through lies, deception, social engineering, manipulation behind the scenes, and, and drinks being drugged as well. It was something that Talisa asserted. You can Google that um, or go to circusofthemind.net and at the bottom of the page there's links to all the evidence and such like. Case collapsed, Mahmood was exposed, and Talisa correctly this stated. This case was a horrific and disgusting entrapment by Mazir Mahmood. We have now succeeded in exposing the real culprits, and most importantly, the real liar. As someone who has had my life ruined for the past year, I strongly believe that this type of entrapment should not be allowed to happen to anyone. And I could not agree more. That was 2014. What wasn't known at that time, that is now in 2023, is in the past couple of years, so post-2020, um, disclosure in the High Court, Mitville, the phone hacking unlawful information cases, has, with disclosure from newsgroup newspapers, uncovered documents showing the Metropolitan Police and the Crown Prosecution Service communicating with each other in 1994, stating that Mazza Mahmood could not and should not ever be considered as a witness of truth at any time in the future. And yet, for some reason, this was ignored. Not only was it ignored, but also it was never disclosed to me or any other fake shake victims post-1994. So the Crown Prosecution Service and the police failed in their legal duty of disclosure. Further, in 1999, Roger Griggs' case fell apart because they could no longer rely on um, the recordings from Mahmood that had been edited and whatnot. Again, this was never disclosed to me or any other fake shape victim. Not even in 2014 when they issued disclosure packs to uh, previous um, people who'd been convicted um, after the Talisa trial collapsed, all they included was a little bit of information about the Talisa case. They didn't even take that opportunity. And to this day in 2023, the Crown Prosecution Service have never told me or any other fake shake victim that they knew and communicated with the police in 1994, saying he should not and could not ever be considered a witness of truth in future. October 2016. It's when the trial of Mazza Mahmood started at the Old Bailey in London. I was there along with actor John Alford from London's Burning and Grange Hill, former glamour model and actress Emma Morgan, heavyweight boxing champion Herbie Hydes, a whole bunch of other people to see some justice um, finally be served. 41 minutes and 12 seconds into episode three of the fake shake and Mahmood arriving at court for his trial and um well yeah look out play spot royal's head um because i was there outside court as you can see i remember him arriving to court a couple of big blokes that's my head on either side of him there oh and there's my face his little navy blue anorak and his hood and yes it was a highly emotional feeling to witness him be found guilty unanimously by the jury bailey what is the verdict richard uh, the verdict joanna is that both uh, maza mahmood the so-called fake shake and his former driver alan smith have both been found guilty of conspiring to pervert the course of justice yes 
So for some reason, they've suddenly now immediately gone to Mahmoud's, gone to prison. He did not go to prison on the day. The footage that you saw, he was going, getting into a car after being found guilty. He was out on bail. He went back for sentencing another time. I know because I was there in the uh, old Bailey when he got sentenced. Anyway, for some reason, they've cut that bit out, which means you're not seeing the speech outside the old Bailey that was made by John Alford with me stood there with Emma Morgan and Herbie Hydes. But you can see that on circusofthemind.net. In any event, here's Neil Wallace from the News of the World. Hilarious, this. Going to prison, and that's the killer, that's the killer thing. Because it wipes away journalists of the year. Actually, that's not him. This is Neil Wallace. It probably misses off the first word, so. He starts by saying so much. Much top notch journalism. Really? Is forgotten because of what happened at the end of his career. Not what happened at the end of his bloody career. Talisa Trow collapsed 2014. He was jailed in 2016. It's not just that, law. Go to circusofthemind.net. The evidence is there in 1994. 20 years before the collapse of the Talisa trial, Mahmood was stated to be, by the police and the Crown Prosecution Service, untrustable. In documents between each other, they communicate the Met Police and the Crown Prosecution Service and say he cannot, should not and could not be relied upon as a witness of truth in any further cases from 1994 onwards. But why? For some reason he was, God knows. And in 1999 a trial collapsed against Rodri Giggs because the prosecution could no longer rely on the taped evidence. This wasn't just the end of his career, it was throughout his career. These final words from Paul Samurai really do sum up my mood. He has no sense of guilt, no conscience, no morality. Correct. Mahmood gets asked if he's fond of his fake shake persona. Fake shake robes. Wait, 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 wait. I, I am. I've had a lot of fun with it. I mean, all the trappings of, of the shake is so, such a polished performance. You get away with it. You use that phrase, we get away with it. Do you ever feel... Oh, a little bit uncomfortable in your own skin that this is the way you operate. Not at all. I'm proud of what, of what I do. I wouldn't do it otherwise. Proud of ruining lies. Coward. Mahmood was approached for comment but did not respond. Well, this is the guy who refused to give evidence at the trial against him at the Old Bailey. Silence spoke volumes of his guilt then. I would say it does the same now. News UK was also approached but did not respond. In fairness, that might be because we've got numerous fake shape victims who filed cases in September 2022 against them for unlawful information gathering and other unlawful and illegal activities that they were victim of at the hands of Mazza Mahmood and his bosses at News UK. I'd say they missed out the fact that he wasn't sentenced the same day he was found guilty. He came back another day when I was in the um, Old Bailey with Emma Morgan and Herbie Hydes, as was shown, along with John Alford. Um, you can find this video on YouTube, The Victims of the Fake Shake. Type in The Victims of the Fake Shake. BBC Newsnight comes up. Or you can go to politicallight.com for the exclusive story of The Fake Shake. Drugs, Celebs and Royals During News of the World Sting Operations, which was published on the 24th of September 2023, and where I have provided the evidence of celebrities galore asserting the fact that they were drugged by the fake sheikh Mazama Mood. Going back to the 90s, this went on throughout his career, uh, myself and many other people would allege. And also evidence that he hacked numerous people's phones. The fight for justice continues. So having watched all three episodes, what can I say? Personally, I'd go on YouTube or go to circusofthemind.net and watch the 2014 BBC Panorama episode, The Fake Shake Exposed. And although it's only roughly half an hour long, there is more truth about Mahmood's dishonesty and modest operandi in that panorama episode than there is in the entire three episodes of the fake shake 
um, Amazon documentary. And circusofthemind.net contains far more information and facts. The company that made this voltage television did speak to me in 2022. I met with them in person. We communicated by email numerous times. And they definitely looked at my website, circusofthemind.net, and the other links there. So why they've not mentioned the fact of the evidence that Mahmood and his associates and team hack people's phones and used other forms of unlawful information gathering routinely, and proof of that going back to my case in 1998, proof going back to John Alford's case in 97, which incidentally, he's now received a settlement in the High Court for the unlawful information gathering case he took against newsgroup newspapers. Uh, no mention of that either. No mention of the fact that there is dozens of people over the years who say their drinks were drugged and that Steve Grayson gave me a statement, which I was also given permission to share, stating that he'd witnessed Mamou drug somebody as in the course of a sting and that Mamou boasted about being able to get the drugs from a pharmacist friend, as well as the fact that he boasted about using them in his private life. You'd think that would go in an expose documentary about Mamou as well, wouldn't you? What about the mention of Rodri Giggs' case in 1999, collapsing because the prosecution decided they couldn't rely on the taped evidence? So many things you can see at circusofthemind.net that were not covered. It doesn't even scrape the surface. My name is Alex William Smith by birth. These days I'm better known as Jonathan Royal Hypnotist. I was formerly known as magician Alex Leroy. In 1998, I set out to expose the dishonest uh, activities of Baza Mahmood. Unfortunately, this backfired, landing me in prison. As explained at circusofthemind.net, I became very much a victim of Maza Mahmood, the fake sheikh. And in the past couple of years, um, it's come to light the proof and evidence that he hacked my phone, used unlawful information gathering, and that he drugged my drinks, as well as what I already knew, that he manipulated and intimidated behind the scenes through his associates and basically outright lied. What follows, there are some clips from either episode one or episode two or episode three of Amazon Prime's uh, documentary which released on the 26th of September 2023 called The Fake Shake. These clips are used under fair usage, copyright exemption and the fact that I'm giving a critical review of the content.